Hey guys, welcome back to what the hell? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the 8-9 Garage. I got a disturbing fact to tell you. Winter's almost here. In today's episode, we are going to be taking care of the transmission fluid in my Toyota. My Toyota is a 2007 Yaris and has a 1.5 liter. I believe the transmission is a U340. I will put in the description what vehicles this covers because you can use this on other Toyotas too. I do believe that at least the Corolla also used this transmission, but I think maybe like the Echo and some other stuff used it as well. It's actually a really good transmission. Uh, this one has 225,000 miles on it. If you change the fluid in them, they'll last you forever. Let's get in here and I'm going to show you uh, what we're going to do today. I just got out the stuff. It is indeed a 340. As we can tell right here, U340, U340. So anything with a U340, this should work just fine. Um, this here is our pan gasket, obviously. These here are some really decent gaskets. They're made by Farpac. Uh, I got this at Whatever It Takes Transmissions here in Salt Lake City. This says made in Taiwan in it, guys. But even when I've put Wix filters in it, they look identical to this. I don't think we're gonna find one that's not made in Taiwan. The other thing we're using, this stuff is the best. I've used, this will be the sixth time I'm using this in this trance. And it usually, this is a four quart jug, I think. And we're usually just a hair over four quarts, four and a quarter, four and a half. So uh, that's something that we'll dump these We'll dump this floor in and then see where it sits from there. But uh, first we gotta drain it and all that good stuff. So let's let's climb under there, get working. All right, this is a 10. Allen head. <clears throat> Ooh wee, that came out quick. A little warm. I got home from work about two hours ago, so it's still a little warm. That's what I like to see, it's still red. All right, next, uh, we're gonna remove this shield right here. Uh, there's a couple tins, one here, Two up here, there's one there, one there, and there's one here, and mine used to have another one right here, but uh, I don't know, I don't know what happened to it, so it's got a zip tie, so you may have a 10 there, or you might not have this thing at all, I don't know, I have done this job before without removing that and it is a pain in the butt getting those bolts right there in and out so i strongly suggest that you go ahead and remove this panel as well okay this thing's in rough shape so i had to use a big old washer on that one I'm gonna do this. This one here. Oops. This one here. And I might be able to just swing this out of the way without. Uh... Oh, goodness, there's some rocks and things. 
I'm not gonna worry about uh, breaking that loose because I got plenty of room right now. What we're gonna do here is go ahead and take this pan off. These are also tens, so should be quick and painless because we already got the stuff here. You can uninstall with an impact, which is what I'm doing today. But I do not suggest you install with an impact. All right, put you guys on a tripod, so I have both hands. Oops. We will be discarding this gasket. They, these rubber ones, this is what I've used a few times on this now. And uh, because this is what you get over to O'Reilly. And it's, it's just, after a year of use, they're all cracked up, they're junk. So I'm glad to be using a different kind this time. Okay, so now we're to here. We'll take and clean that pan in just a second. We're gonna go ahead and remove this filter. And it also is tins. These bolts are a little on the long side. They do go up into the case. I thought I had a little more time than that. <laughs> okay, good thing I put down some cardboard. All right, now we're to this point here. When you remove the old filter, you want to be double sure that this O-ring comes out with it. Because if you put two O-rings in that, it's not gonna be bueno. Let's see if this says Wix on it, I'm pretty sure. It was a Wix. Yeah, Wix made in Taiwan. I, I'll show that to you. Wix made in Taiwan. Oh my goodness gracious. Last thing we want to do, get this on my beautiful driveway. Everything really, really looks great. Smells fine. All right, so we're gonna go get us a bottle of Brake Clean. And we're going to go ahead and clean this pan off best we can. clean those are on these particular pans these corners right here are where the magnets go we're just gonna take and spray this down a little bit especially around the areas where we're putting a gasket then I just take and go around here make sure we got all the crap off of there that we can okay now uh, we need to 
grab the filter and the gasket. That's the other thing you gotta remember to look for is that the O-ring goes on it too, the new filter. I haven't seen one of these filters that does not come with a new O-ring. gasket right here all right so I just kind of wanted to show you this gasket now that it's out of the package kind of reminds me of like a Felpro gasket the old blue gaskets that you could basically reuse all the time okay so you want to line your gasket up with the pan Remember that the drain goes towards the back of the car. We're just gonna get a couple couple screws started. I don't know how far into this we are time wise, but it's really really not too bad. It's not a whole bunch more involved than just changing the oil. I'm gonna get a couple, two, three, four of these in here, and then I'm gonna get my electric ratchet. Believe me, this, this thing does not put out a ton of torque, so I'm not, not worried about over torquing anything with this. We're torquing these to 10. Do a crunch. one okay torque to 10 all the way around snug then we're gonna take this and blast it the reason I do this is it's a little bit easier if you have a leak to identify it we need to put this back up
cool. All right, let's go back over everything we did. We just put those bolts back in. Went over all these and torqued them to 10 foot pounds with this bad boy here. And now we're gonna get up top and fill it up with trans fluid. All right, we are under the hood, obviously. We're gonna pop this dipstick out for trans fluid. If there's one thing Toyota could have done better, it was make this a little easier to put fluid into. But we're gonna work with what we got. Just gotta go slow because it will burp if you don't. Alright, you can't go off of the level right now because it isn't sucked up into the pump or the filter or any of that stuff just yet. And plus we gotta get this car back down level, all that good stuff. It really should go for a drive, a heat cycle first as well. Alright, so it's been a day or two. Let's check this. It's not, it's kind of, I drove it about an hour ago. So it's uh, the bottom two hash marks there in between those two cutouts on the on the left. That's the cold fill line and the, the hot fill line is above that. So we're right in the middle. Let's, uh, let's wipe this off and just show you where it says hot and cold, I hope. There, cool and hot is actually what it says, not cold. Anyway, we're right in between that, so we're good. Sorry for the wind noise. Thanks for watching another episode of the 8-9 Garage.